Thanks be to God indeed. The theme for this sermon is Wisdom Acts. Wisdom Acts. Coming off of July 4th and the parade on 53rd Street, I wanted to reflect a little bit on the flag in our country. The flag and the national anthem have a lot of sentimental value in our country. Interestingly, this tradition of standing for the national anthem began during the 20th century. During World War I in 1918 at a Red Sox game, spirits were at an ultimate low because of a bomb that had gone off the day before. And because the U.S. government had just announced that it would soon begin drafting baseball players to fight in the war, as well as civilians. During one of the innings, the band started to play, and all of the players stopped playing to take off their hats, to put their hands over their hearts, and to face the flag. After the song was done, the whole audience erupted into applause, and spirits were lifted once again. The lifting of spirits was such a success that they continued to play the Star Spangled Banner for every game for the rest of the series. However, it gained its prominence during World War II, and it has become more and more a customary practice. When you go to sports, you know you're going to stand, you know you're going to sing, you know you're going to put your arm over your chest. The Hill, a non-bipartisan news media, reports we stand for the flag today not to please ourselves, but to honor those who paid the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom. We stand for the flag not to focus on what divides us, but on what unites us, which is being an American. We stand not because of past or present pain caused by injustice, but to salute the principle of justice. Standing for the national anthem and flag communicates a sense of patriotism and national identity. Standing shows a sign of respect, which is perhaps why so many Americans took an affront to others who have chosen to kneel. They take it as an attack on themselves, the country, traditions, and our soldiers. In 2016, Colin Kaepernick, while in contract with the San Francisco 49ers, kneeled while the national anthem was playing. His kneeling sparked a nationwide debate about the intersection of sports and activism, freedom of expression, racial injustice, and police brutality. Following him taking a knee, he opted out of contract with his team, and no team, no team has signed him since. While it ended his career, it amplified the conversation about racial inequality and police brutality in the United States. Cohen had this to say about his career. I'm not going to stand up to show pride in a flag for a country that oppresses black people and people of color. To me, this is bigger than football, and it would be selfish on my part to look the other way. There are bodies in the street and people getting paid leave and getting away with murder. In the past two weeks, I went to a funeral of someone who was shot down on Father's Day. I was talking to a member yesterday, and that member was sharing with me that her great niece, while at a party, was shot and killed. A lot of things are happening in our streets. There comes a time in our lives when sometimes we have to take a stand. We didn't even perhaps know how deeply we felt about something, but our values called upon us and pushed us to take, a time, to take a stand. There comes a time when the road changes, when our words cannot stay stuck in our throat any longer, when our actions must align with what it is we say we believe, when our actions must speak louder than our words, when our deeds must go over uncharted territory. And this is where we find ourselves in the Bible today. Jesus' ministry was sort of like taking a knee. There are rules and order, and Jesus pretty much did what he wanted, or so it appeared to others. 
The rule said no healing on the Sabbath, black and white, no work on Sunday. Sit down somewhere and rest. But Jesus encountered a sick man, and apparently instead of waiting until the next day, he goes and heals him right away. He has already been sick a while. Couldn't it wait, Jesus? I mean, couldn't you, couldn't you wait 24 more hours? And you wonder why we think you're not a team player. You like to shine all by yourself, Jesus. Break rules, coming and going. According to Professor Elizabeth Johnson, the scribes and Pharisees prided themselves on being learned in the law, yet failed to understand the basics of justice and mercy and faith. They repeatedly reject Jesus and conspire against him, thus conspiring against the very purpose of God. And maybe, just maybe, all the gossip had reached Jesus' ear, and he felt some kind of way about what he was hearing. Early in ministry, some members decided they wanted to take me out to dinner for my birthday. They wanted to take me to an all-you-can-eat buffet at the casino, Young and very much evangelical, I wondered, how could I get out of this situation? There was no way that I could be seen in care eating at the casino. There are thousands and thousands of restaurants in Chicago. Of all the restaurants these people wanted to take me out to, they had to pick the all-you-can-eat seafood buffet at the Horseshoe Casino. And so I began to think, how can I get out of this? And I tried to come up with a plan. And I tried it out on them. But these members were convinced that I had to go to this place to eat food. Apparently, the casino at the time had a seafood buffet on Friday night, and it was a die for, and you had to go. Any of you guys ever been to the Horseshoe Seafood Casino All-You-Can-Eat Buffet? Okay, I got a lady in the back. One more. Okay, y'all, y'all slow to show the, okay. I'm not trying to out you, really, really, I'm not. I'm just trying to see if people can understand the context in which I'm sharing. So sure enough, I did go out to eat with them at the casino, and sure enough, <laughs> I saw somebody else that knew me, right? This, this, this would happen. I couldn't understand why they couldn't understand. But again, I went with paranoia and all over to Indiana to the horseshoe. I imagine when Jesus started hanging out with folks, he might as well have been hanging out at the Horseshoe Casino from the perspective of the scribes and Pharisees. He was hanging with questionable people in a questionable place. I imagine the religious folks looked on and thought, oh my God, what Jesus is doing now. He eats with sex workers. He hangs with gamblers. He rolls with gangbangers. He chats with hustlers. He sits with the peddlers on 53rd Street. He talks with the folks who talk to themselves. He engages with those who are blind. I imagine a disciple tried to school Jesus. You know, your suspects are a little bit shady. And Jesus was a little bit salty about the misunderstanding of his actions in the passage today. Jesus was a preacher of grace and turning lives around and over. And what the people were saying about him taking a knee wasn't the whole story. They had misunderstood his fellow servant, John, and they had really not understood Jesus' mission. There's a lot of that going around, misunderstanding the push to make the country a safe space for immigrants, a push to make this a safe space for the trans, pushing to make this a safe space for urban youth, the undocumented, they, them, suburban youth, misunderstandings that our God operates from a space of exclusion not inclusion. There's room at the table for all. There is food in the fridge, and there is love in our heart. In the words of Mother Teresa, if you are kind, people may accuse you of selfish, ulterior motives, but be kind anyway. The good you do today, people will often forget to tomorrow. Do good anyway. Give the world the best you have. And it may never be enough. Give the world the best you've got anyway. You see, in the final analysis, it's between you and your God. It was never between you and them anyway. Wisdom, wisdom acts. 
Jesus was vindicated by his wisdom acts. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the water became wine and the party continued because celebrations are needed. The sick are healed, the misunderstood are heard, the damned are given second chances, the poor get good news brought to them. Jesus had got a real 24-7 operation and he makes guest appearances at casinos and he takes the knee for those who have been pushed to the margin. Actions speak louder than words. Our deeds are louder than our social media profile. Our steps are ordered by God. Our walk is longer than others' accusations. Our hearts are bigger than hurt. They will know us by our love. They will know us by our fruit. This week, I got a text message requesting prayer, period. No other other words were given, pray for me. When we pray for one another, it's a deed. When we give rise and invite each other over, it's a deed. When we stand by those who are going through grief, it's a deed. When we call those we have not seen or heard, it's a deed. It's a wisdom act. When we prepare sandwiches for the night ministry, it's a deed. When we pass out plants on our lawn, it's a deed. When we extend peace to one another, it's a deed. And on July 4th, when people were parched in the sun, they were reaching for that water. It was a deed. When we listen to each other's journey at community check-in, it's a deed. When we contribute to happy fellowship hour, it's a deed. When we clean the church, it's a deed. Everything we do unto the Lord, it's a deed. When we hang our banner declaring that all people on all walks of life are welcome here, it's a deed. And when the flag gets removed and we have to put up another, it's a deed. Every smile and hand we extend is a deed. Every time we behold and lean in instead of walking away, it's a deed. When we sit with one another, it's a deed. When we see people in the midst of the storm who are largely in ignored because of the inconvenience, it's a deed. And when we try to help, it's a deed. And if that gets misunderstood, do the right thing anyway. Maya Angelou said, you may write me down in history with your bitter twisted lies. You may trot me in the very dirt, but still like dust, we're going to rise. We're going to be all right. We're going to do the right thing. People can put their spin on it. They can put their twist on it. Colin lost a career, but he sparked a conversation. And Jesus lost a life, but he started a movement. Their actions were proven wise by the results they got. Our Christian faith compels us, even in 2023, to act, to do good deeds. Amen.